So here's our first really fun uh, assignment to build. We're going to build a pulse sensor. And by pulse sensor, what I mean is um, we're going to find when does our heartbeat by looking at the color change in our finger. So you can't tell by looking at your finger because our eyes aren't really sensitive enough. But every time my heart beats, um, blood gets rushed through the capillaries and uh, disperses, you know, and is, is sending oxygenated uh, hemoglobin uh, into my cells. So, you know, we're getting energy around and then we're removing things. Um, but that means that every time my heart beats, my finger is kind of pulsing with different colors. So how are we going to detect that? Well, we've got our phototransistor. So that can see changes in light or just it just sees light level. And then we can also shine light into our finger using this super bright red LED. So these are the same two components we used in an earlier lab, uh, the feedback lab, to demonstrate how negative feedback worked with the op amp. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our basic phototransistor circuit. Our phototransistor, there's light hitting it, and we're going to get some output voltage. And we'll choose something like, I don't know, 10k uh, to be in series with it. So the voltage out won't be huge. And that's something we can play around with if we need a bigger signal. Um, and uh, right next to it, I'm going to leave myself a lot of room, I'm going to build my LED circuit. So I'm going to take that super bright red LED to 100 ohms. It's going to be nice and bread. Ni sorry, nice and bright red. <laughs> and we're going to shine it not into the phototransistor, but I'm going to shine it into my finger, and then the light is going to reflect off of my finger and hit the phototransistor. So here's the big super bright red LED shining light. It's going. I'm going to put my big finger on top of it like that. The light's going to reflect off onto the little phototransistor. That's going to make a voltage that we can see. Um, so remember the long side of the... Uh, LED is positive. The short side of the phototransistor is positive. The phototransistor does work backwards, but not nearly as well. So uh, make sure that you remember that the, for some reason this particular phototransistor is backwards from the normal convention. Um, okay, well, uh, why don't I build that real fast and we'll see how it works. So I'm going to take a look at my end scope. And the trick here is that I need the phototransistor and the, uh, uh, the LED to be um, right next to each other, but I also need them to be at the same height. So because the the LED is taller than the phototransistor, I need to trim it. And this is going to be very sensitive to movement. So eventually I'm going to put my finger on top of these two, kind of like this. Um, but if I wiggle, if I jiggle, it's going to pick up that signal. That's going to be way bigger than the signal coming from my heartbeat. Um, so I also want to trim these down so they are pretty flush to the board, but I want to leave the wires to the phototransistor just a little longer so that in the end they're both at the same height. Okay, so I'm going to uh, remember which one is the long and the short side as I cut these, and I'll put the short side towards the positive, it's up, so I remember which is long and which side be positive. Okay, so I've trimmed that pretty low. Okay, so now they're pretty close to the board. You can see that. And I'll be able to put my finger on it and kind of rest my hand without jiggling too much to pick up that signal. And I need a uh, 10K resistor on my phototransistor to ground. And I wanted a 100 ohm resistor on my LED. My LED needs to be connected to ground. As soon as I do that, it should turn on. So look how nice and crazy bright that is um, from the side. Not so obvious that it's bright, but this is a, like a little laser beam of light. I'll turn that off so that I don't blind my camera. And I want um, positive five also for the top of my phototransistor. And I want to see the voltage from the phototransistor on my channel 1 the end scope. We'll switch over to end scope. And there we see that fuzzy signal. That's my um, uh, the lights from my uh, uh, 
setup being kind of blurry. And so now I'm covering this with my hand. Um, so no light is hitting it except for the light that's bouncing off my hand. And if I use my finger, so I'm just getting a pretty solid two volts from the phototransistor with my fingers there. I can't see my pulse, but we, we might, if you really look at it, see every once in a while there's a, like a one pixel downwards blip. That's probably our signal. So if I wiggle my finger, we can see it move around. I take my hand off, it goes back again. Okay, so I'll show you. Here, this was me covering the light so it wasn't fuzzy. This is me just laying my hand on here, and I get about two volts um, on the phototransistor when I do this. And you can even see the light going all the way through my finger. So what's going on here? Um, we've got a voltage versus time coming from the phototransistor, and most of it, the two volts portion, is just because there's a certain amount of light always reflecting from my finger. And then on top of that is probably a signal that looks like, you know, a heartbeat. And that's what's changing due to the fact that m the color of my finger is changing. That's going to be really tiny. I don't know. Let's say it's um, 10 microvolts. I'm just making that up. But you can see most of the signal um, is just a constant because of the fact that my finger's there. And a tiny bit of the signal um, is changing with time. So we need to somehow subtract two volts from our signal and then multiply by, I don't know, 100 or 1,000 or a million or something to make this a really big voltage so that we can see it. So you have two ways to do that. One is with a differential op amp, and we can just take this voltage and we can subtract two volts, and then we can multiply. That's going to be hard, though, because you actually saw this two volts, which I said was constant, it really depends on you know where my finger is and if I, if I wiggle my finger and... Um, things like that. So instead of plotting a voltage versus time graph, let's instead think about it as voltage versus frequency. What are the frequency components of these signals? Well, at zero hertz, that's roughly the constant two volts from the fact that my finger's there. Sometimes, though, it's only one volt, and sometimes it's like three volts. Uh, it just depends on how you know, much I wiggle my hand. But it doesn't really change with time very fast, so it's essentially a zero hertz signal. And then way over here, you know, I've got this tiny, tiny uh, microvolt level signal, um, but it's happening on the order of, you know, whatever my heartbeat is. My heartbeat's probably one hertz, um, but if I got a little more excited, it might go up to two hertz or three hertz. So when you see a voltage profile like this, you should say, hmm, this looks like a good application for a filter. If I can design a high pass filter with this kind of a shape, it will remove one hertz, or sorry, it will remove zero hertz and it will keep one hertz. So I want to design a filter that takes the output voltage from um, uh, my phototransistor and filters it. So I will take, um, this is my phototransistor voltage, and uh, I will go into a high pass filter. And the frequency at which the uh, filter transitions like that, that's called the knee frequency, and its value is 1 over 2 pi r c. So we would choose an r and a c to try to get that between 0 and 1 hertz. Um, so the input would look like this. So the output of that signal, uh, voltage versus time, now should be little tiny blips with a mean of 0 because we've used the high pass filter to remove that. So I'm going to go find uh, some resistor and capacitor combination that I like. I'll let you figure out on your own <laughs> uh, what you like. And we'll add that um, to the output. Uh, actually, so the C goes to ground. Sorry, the R goes to ground. I need capacitor from somewhere. Oh, here's a good capacitor. I'm going to leave that original signal on channel 1 for a moment so we can see the difference between the input of the filter and the output. Okay, we'll go back to Enscope. Turn on channel 2. And I'll put my finger on the board. 
And so as I kind of move my finger around and I could press harder or not, uh, we can see that the green line is of magnitude much smaller than red. And if I try to zoom in on green, and I can see if I kind of like, I'm now moving my finger, we can see little tiny changes on red, but the, the amount is amplified on green. So if I just try to stay really still, I don't know, can you see it? Somewhere in here is probably once per second a bump due to my heartbeat, but it's still kind of noisy and the signal is really small. So when we ever see a small, a small signal like that, let's make it bigger. So our job is to build a uh, an amplifier to make that bigger. And we might as well use a non-inverting amplifier. So here's our new V out that will go into our non-inverting amp. And what was that signal on the millivolt scale probably? I probably want a gain of like 100, so maybe I'll use a 100K and a 1K, give me a gain of 100. So now this signal was on the millivolt level. I see the same exact thing, but it should be on the volt level coming out of my amplifier. And you could probably guess what's happening next. This has noise on it, so we're going to build a low pass filter so that we take that noisy signal out of the amplifier and hopefully get something that's like a heartbeat on roughly a, a one volt scale every second. So let me build those two things. Um, by the way, this is so this is the high pass up here, HP for high pass, LP for low pass. They have the same equation, one over two pi RC. The high pass looks like that and the low pass looks like that. So on the low pass, we get rid of high frequencies. On the high pass, we get rid of low frequencies. Okay, so I'm gonna build my amplifier and then I'm gonna build a low pass filter and we will compare those signals. My up amp a little closer and spread. You know, I usually don't turn the power off when I build these things, but I guess I'll set a good example. Have our plus five and minus five op amp. Um, I'm going to take the voltage from my high pass filter and put it to the plus of the op amp. And I'll try to build a gain of 100. I guess it's technically 101. Whatever. There's a 1K. Okay, and we'll look at that. Let me look at that on channel three. Now, I guess before I build the low pass, um, I should check to make sure the op amp works. Don't want to build too much without testing. Let me go turn on channel three. And wow, it's a. Uh, all the way up at five. That's probably not a good sign. Let me put my finger on. Make sure I use the right chip. Yeah, 272, that's right. So what is going on here? Maybe the green signal, which is the input to my uh, amplifier, um, maybe that times my gain of 100 is just bigger than five. So I'll quickly decrease my gain. I'll switch out the 1K um, for a 10K. So I'll turn that into a gain of 10 instead of the gain of 100. Oh, maybe I even plugged it in backwards, yeah. Okay, so now the blue has a gain of 10 instead of 100. I got the feeling I plugged in the, the 1K in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna take that 10K out again, put the uh, 1K back in. Okay, here we go. So the blue signal is changing with time. So that should be the exact same thing as the green one, just times 100. And I'm hoping that once I do some filtering on that, I can 
see my heartbeat again. Take my finger off, and that's suddenly the light hitting it is much bigger signal than my finger was. Okay, so last step, uh, the output voltage from um, the op amp. I'm going to low pass filter. I'll make this pretty messy. I'm just blindly guessing at what these uh, filter frequencies should be. You might not have intuition for that yet. Don't worry, you'll get it. Now we're using all four inputs to the uh, to the scope. That's neat. We go back to N scope. And turn on channel four. Channel four should be the average of uh, channel three, the blue one, um, because that's what the filter does. It's essentially taking a you know a slow average of that signal. And all that's kind of busy, so let me just turn everything off except for channel four. Try to position my finger in the right spot. And so it looks like my gain could be a little bigger, up to 500 millivolts. There's my heartbeat. All right, I've been doing this for years now. And you kind of develop the right touch. Um, so if you see what I'm doing, I'm laying my hand on my table, so I'm not, I can't like vibrate my hand. And I'm just kind of placing my finger. I'm not pushing down with my finger. I'm just kind of like letting gravity push my finger using my finger tip. These two are real close to each other, so the light reflecting off my finger goes into that phototransistor. If I push too hard signal kind of goes away because I, I don't know I guess I'm blocking the capillaries and if I don't now I'm just touching the LED I'm not touching the phototransistor my finger is very wobbly so the signal is going kind of crazy so I really have to figure out how to touch both the LED and the phototransistor not move even breathing or <laughs> talking makes this look a little funny okay we'll go back Camera one more time. So that signal is still on like the 500 millivolt size. So I might even take this and then do another non inverting amp, maybe another times, I don't know, five or 10 to try to get this signal back out on the one volt scale. So this is how we're going to build a pulse sensor. Try to, now I made this a little messy. Try to make yours a little neater because we're going to use this again next week. And instead of just looking at the voltage on the Enscope app, we're actually going to import it into Python and see the raw data itself and try to get Python um, with an algorithm that you write to tell us what your uh, heartbeat, what your heart rate is in beats per minute.